Hey guys, so I'm getting ready to go elk hunting in Montana and changing things up this year a little bit on the old ultimate elk rifle, the old 338 Win Mag. Um, put a new scope on it. It's a uh, loophole V6 HD. Um, so, and it's like a 3 to 18 by 44 millimeter objective. And it's got the CDS dial on it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to mount this new scope on my rifle. Um, kind of show you guys how I do it. I know 100% I'm going to get a lot of a lot of help from you guys out in the audience to watch this and say, hey, here's how I do it. So, hey, please comment below. Let me know how you mount your optics to your guns. There's lots of little tricks and little safety features and everybody kind of does a little bit of different things to, to get their scope on there secure and uh, level. And anyway, um, here's how I do it. I showed you guys how I did arrows. Um, my maiden voyage in arrow building. Um, I've mounted a few scopes in my time. I've mounted lots actually. I've been messing with scopes for since I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. Uh, my dad used to get pissed off at me because I would uh, sit around the house and swap one scope from one rifle to the next rifle and play musical scopes with them all the time and then have to go recite them in and shoot them. And, and uh, yeah, he kind of got a little bit grouchy a few times. Quit, quit messing with the scopes. So anyway, I've, I've mounted a few of these things. Um, I'm not going to do the whole complete process from uh, mounting the uh, base to the action. Um, that's already done on this one. And I'll kind of tell you what I did when I mounted this base. This is a Picatinny rail base. Uh, I think it's a 20 MOA base. And... Uh, a rail and whenever I mounted that to the action I did a little trick that some of you guys probably have heard of maybe you haven't um, but it's kind of a little trick that the the long-range shooting guys do and the guys who just want a rock solid mount is um, I took a little bit of JB weld and when I mean a little bit I mean the thinnest layer that could possibly apply to the bottom side of the mat of the mount and this what this does there's two two things okay what it's going to do is going to make complete contact with the action to the base. So every bit of of that uh, every bit of that metal on that base <clears throat> will have support touching the action because when that JB weld sets up, it, has, it sets up hard, almost like steel, right? So it gives you perfect contact. Another thing it does is it kind of glues your dang base to the action. Uh, let's say you want to pull this base off and put something a different kind of scope mount on there I've literally had to take a mallet and beat on those things to get them off um, Because it's it it makes that that good of a bond so let's say maybe your screws loosen up or something and Like having a loose base is really tricky loose rings are usually easy pretty easy to spot but a loose base is really hard to spot and you're your mounting solution has to be rock solid. You can have the very best scope in the world. I don't care what you think the best optic is in the world. You can have the very best optic on, in the world on your rifle. And if you have subpar quality or subpar uh, mounting system that's not solid and not perfectly tight and not moving, then you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have point of impact issues with your bullet. So anyway, I'm gonna make this as simple as possible, but uh, um, I've <laughs> I've got these rings. They're just a one-piece ring. Well, actually, a, they're actually a two-piece ring uh, that clamps together. And you guys are probably gonna make fun of me. I don't even remember what brand they are. Um, I've had this this set up for a long time with with this mounting solution, and I don't <laughs> I don't even remember what brand they are. So I'm sorry. Comment below if you recognize them. That way you can remind me. Um, hey, dummy, <laughs> that's a it's a, I don't know, you guys are probably going to make fun of me. Um, so anyway, let me know, please and thank you. And anyway, I'll show you how I do it. And um, I'm going to show you the poor man's way to level your scope. Uh, I don't have one of those really cool uh, Wheeler Industries uh, level, level, levels. I wish I did. Um, I just don't have one of those with me today. So I'm going to show you how the layperson mounts a scope. Watch this. All right, guys, so we've got the loophole 
VX6. Got one of these scopes on my <clears throat> other rifle, bought a new rifle last year. It was a 6.5 Creedmoor, <laughs> 6.5 Needmoor for all you haters. Yeah, I'm not saying that's the ultimate rifle or caliber or anything. I won't argue that with anyone. Um, it's a good, good gun, shoots great, no recoil, very accurate. Um, yeah, I'm not going to argue with anybody about it being the best c cartridge in the world. That's that's not me. But uh, what I will say this, it shot beautifully on that rifle as a Tika T3 light. And uh, so anyway, I'm so impressed with the uh, scope. I want another one for my 338 Win Mag. And uh, here we are. So we're going to put that thing on there, mount it. Um, then we'll go out here to the range and shoot it and sight it in. And be ready for my elk hunting trip. Yeah, I'm kind of a procrastinator. I should have probably had this thing mounted last summer, but uh, I've been busy, I've been busy. I had to move, I had to scout for elk season, yada, 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 lots of excuses. But anyway, here I am today mounting my scope and uh, then we'll sight it in and then get ready to head out for my big Montana elk hunt. I'm gonna go solo, so that should be fun. I'm gonna take you guys along. I'll video as much as I can from a vlog perspective. Um, so, Hopefully that won't bore you guys to death. But anyway, back on task here. Let's get this scope mounted. If you notice right here, these are kind of a little recoil lug that go right in the middle of the bottom of the rings. So once all that clips in, then it clamps this on here nice and tight and keeps it from sliding around forward or backward under recoil. Now before we get too carried away, what we're gonna do is put some Loctite on here. Um, just a little bit, we're not gonna slather these things up, we're just gonna put a few couple drops on each screw. That way when it goes in, it gets nice and tight and won't back out on us. We want, we wanna make sure this scope never moves on us until we want it to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on there. We're going to do all the screws. Okay, we've already got our little recoil lugs in place here. So we just want to center those with our rings. Now if you look at the position of the eyepiece, I want that to be moved up a little bit further forward towards even with the back of the recoil lug here. Okay, but when I do that, you look at my ring here and the position of it, um, I just don't really like that spot. So I'm gonna have to move that ring forward a little bit. I want it to center up a little bit more on that meat there on that scope. Um, I think it'll give it a little better, better mount and it, aesthetically it'll look a little better too. Now 
Now we're not going to tighten these too tight. We're just going to snug them up and back them out a little bit because we want to be able to move our scope forward, backward. We want to center things up. We want to make sure we get this scope level. So you don't want it to go too far too quickly. Now I'm going to check to make sure the eye relief is acceptable and substantial um, on these heavy magnum rifles you don't want to have your your scope pushed way back to your eye i see a lot of scopes guys will will mount them way back far towards your eye especially if you're going to be laying down shooting prone you want that scope far forward uh, about even with that rear tang on your on your action there so anyway i'm going to see check this and see if uh We've got the right amount of eye, eye relief. I want to be able to shoulder this rifle and immediately have a sight picture. I don't want to have to do this and search around. Um, I'm using a really low uh, ring. I think this is about the lowest ones they made at the time uh, when I ordered these way back when. I don't even remember, like I said, what brand they are. But um, these are a really, uh, really low, about the lowest profile uh, ring you can get. I don't like a super tall scope. Um, here's why I'm just I'm shooting a, just a regular sporter rifle um, it's a Factory gun nothing special about it. it does have a Timney trigger set to about two pounds So got rid of that piece of junk factory trigger um, And put a Timney in it. So it's got a sweet trigger pull um, I've Never really had a bunch of custom guns these these factory ones set up, right? They seem to shoot good enough for me. I'm not trying to shoot a thousand yards with this, you know Long range to me is five, six hundred yards. So I think this thing will be plenty good within those kind of uh, kind of distances. But anyway, I want to make sure whenever I, I move this up, I pick up my rifle and want, I want my eye relief to be set to where I immediately have a nice picture to look through. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It immediately immediately got a good sight picture there. So, um, yeah, so line up that eyepiece with the back tang of your action right here, and uh, you can't go wrong. So, how you don't, you don't look like a pirate by getting a black eye when you're laying prone shooting. Believe me, I've had that happen before in the past. Even, I mean, even like this, if you're if you got a weird angle and you're laying weird and maybe you're laying on, you're laying down and you're kind of shooting uphill, you can become a pirate. And if you want to be a pirate, that's how you become a pirate. <laughs> Drink up, me hearty Joe ho. So, anyhow, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next step of leveling this scope. And uh, this is kind of an old card player's trick, literally. So watch this. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a deck of playing cards, and we're gonna count out a handful of them here and see if we can get this distance right. So I'm going to slide this in. Okay, if you notice there's a little bit of contact there, moves the scope. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up a little bit here. You don't want to get too many cards in here because once you tighten your scope up, you won't be able to move them. So this is feels pretty tight. Let me give the scope a little snug here and kind of see where see where we're at. Also, I noticed my scope has actually shifted backwards. So we want to get that thing pushed back forward a little bit. Rocket side to side here. See how we're doing as far as being level. I think we're really close. So looking at everything here, might go a little further forward. Back up just a little bit. And now we're about level there on the back as far as level with this. Now we're going to make sure we're nice and level here before we get too tight. Which looks like we're pretty good. Now another thing we want to do 
we want to slide these rings all the way forward to the front part of that recoil lug so the recoil lug engages, right? We don't want any dead space there. We want metal on metal contact. So I slide this forward, make sure we're all the way forward. Same with this one. The back her off just a little bit here, guys. It's a little tight. There we go. Move it forward. Everything seems good there still. Okay. Check this again. Okay. All right, guys, when you're tightening these up, we're just going to slowly get them in there. We're not going to do put any torque on them at all, really. We're just kind of snugging things up, and we're going to check here and see how level we are. And we're just going to eyeball it. All right, one thing I noticed, guys, was um, when my cards were under there, underneath the saddle of the scope, I noticed it was touching the parallax knob, and it wasn't getting it perfectly level. So I, I kind of eyeballed it. I was like, huh, that's weird. And I kind of noticed that. We're going to just tighten little by little here. Snug things up. Take all the slack out of them. And it's back and forth, just like you do, kind of like on your lug nuts on your truck. We're all snugged up here. Now you can really over tighten these, so I'm not sure exactly what the torque specs are, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Now if we pull this out, perfect. Wasn't too tight, it was just the right right tightness on that saddle and the Picatinny rail. And we should be pretty darn close to level. One thing you guys might uh, comment is that, hey, you didn't lap your rings. So um, what lapping is, you take a lapping bar, it's a, it's a round bar, the same, very virtually the same diameter as the ID of those rings and you put a compound on there and it takes the high spots um, out of those rings. But if you buy high quality rings, you don't have to lap them. And also, if you lap your rings, it gets rid of the anodizing. And anodizing is your friend. You, that's a rough, gritty surface to put against the rough, gritty surface of your scope. So under recoil, um, if you've lapped your rings, there's a chance or a possibility for those for your scope to slip inside those rings so by not lapping them you get better grip um, and this style of, of ring i'm not so sure you can lap them anyway with any kind of uh, precision um, i'm sure somebody's gonna tell me i'm wrong on that but anyway i don't lap i don't lap anything i don't like i don't lap those things i want my scope to be gripped as tightly as possible and uh anyway that's that's why i do that Oh, one more thing before we go, I kind of forgot. I need to uh, put in the battery for the illuminated reticle. And also, uh, this little power throw lever lets you change the power really quickly on the side. It's very nice, low pro. It's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'll, I'll install that as well before we head out. So the ammo, the question is going to be, what are you using for ammo on that 338 Win Mag? A little bit overkill, isn't it? Not really. Um, I feel like elk are a big animal. You want a big bullet in there. Last year I shot a bull with a 6.5 Creedmoor with my buddy Trent's um, SIG cross rifle and uh, killed the bull. Um, didn't have a ton of knockdown power, but I've saw I've seen bulls with take shots with 300 ultra mags before i've shot a bull with a 300 ultra mag a spike bull that uh, took one right through the heart and acted 
made no reaction other than running off. And he lied down at about 100 yards, you know, and had his heart shot out of him. So, you know, I think um, I'm a huge fan of 30 caliber. I think uh, 30 calibers and bigger for for elk and deer too. I, I like a, I like a big gun for deer, um, but um, so that's why I shoot that 338 Win Mag. It's uh, I've been shooting a 338 Win Mag since. I was 15 years old. I've had several of them over the years. I've got my old meat in the pot, my old reliable old 700 BDL Deluxe I've had for ever since I was 15. And I've had some some different ones over the years. I like I like the Remington action. I like the Remington stocks, um, the way they fit, the way they feel. I'm kind of a Remington guy um, all these years. I'm going to try out a new cross though by, by SIG, try one of those out. But anyway, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that 338 Win Mag. And what I'm going to use for ammo is, uh, some federal, uh, premiums. I shot federal premiums forever, uh, in my 338s. And, uh, this one here, I've been shooting 180 grain AccuBond. And that 180 grain AccuBond is a smoker. It actually has a faster muzzle velocity than like 168 grain uh, 7mm uh, Remington mag. So this thing is scooting. Um, but they quit making them. So I got a buddy, my buddy Jake, he suggested that I get a hold of the custom shop, Federal's custom shop, and have them load me some of those up. So I did just that. And uh, I got four boxes of this stuff. And uh, we're gonna give it a try. Should should shoot good. The previous just factory ammo I've had and that 180 grain it grouped good out of this rifle. So uh, stuff out of the custom shop probably would have a little more excellence in the loading of it. So I'm I'm excited to try this stuff out and uh, go elk hunt. That's it, guys. Um, we've got that snugged up pretty nice and tight. Um, we've got a little bit of Loctite on those so they don't come loose later and. Now we'll head over to the range and bore sight this thing and then we'll take a few shots and uh, see where we're grouping. All right guys, we're here. We're at the range. Uh, we're in a little town, a small town America. There's a little nice little gun range here. There's only a couple other guys and uh, it's a super nice facility. I just found this here last weekend and uh, decided, hey, I'm coming back here to shoot my gun and get it all dialed in. So anyway, super nice little, little facility here. The uh, Idaho Department of Fishing Game uh, have made this possible this this shooting range possible for the public to just come out and shoot it's nice safe, a nice safe place a good backdrop they got beautiful shooting benches some nice little shooting huts here so so this is gonna be great man thank you uh department of fishing game you got something right here all right cool well, let's get in here and start shooting all right guys what we're gonna do first is we're gonna bore sight this rifle we're gonna look down the bore of the rifle, put it on the target. So I've got a target out here at 50 yards. I'm gonna look down the bore, center up the target, down the bore, and then I will look through the scope and move my turrets until my crosshairs or my reticle is right on the target. So um, this is about the cheapest and easiest way to do this. You know, there's some really cool bore sighting apparatuses um, out there that uh, I've seen some guys use. They've worked, worked good. I've bought rifles and had the the, the gun shop uh, mount my scope and bore sight it, and it didn't. I didn't even hit paper the first time. So I think you know, if you know what you're doing, I think those bore sighters work good. But if you're just like me, if you're just an old redneck boy uh, from Weipe, you know, this is how we do it. We just look down the barrel. And then we look at the target and then we line everything up and get ready for that first shot. So anyhow, let's check this out and see how it's going to work out. All right, we're going to use the old lead sled here and start making some adjustments here. I just looked through there. I tried to film it. Um, I just couldn't get down the bore very good. Um, so what I did was that target is a perfect circle. There's no beginning. There is no end, because it's a circle. That's kind of nice. It's not like a triangle. 
triangle has like a corner in the end. This one is a circle. And I centered that circle with the bore of the barrel. Okay, we get it. So not only did I make sure the bullseye was right in the middle, um, I also made sure that the fluorescent outline of the outside edge of that target um, was perfectly fit inside that bore. So all I could see is a perfect picture of that target. This is at 50 yards. So then I peek up, I peer up and look through my scope and I just had to move my uh, crosshairs to the left. I had to move the reticle to the left. All right, we're gonna take the first shot and see where we're at on paper, see if we're even close. I hope so. Don't wanna burn up a whole bunch of ammunition zeroing this thing in, so wish me luck. <laughs> All right guys, so the first shot was a little bit high, a little to the right. So, uh, I'm no expert shooter and I'm definitely not an expert scope adjuster. So, <laughs> I accidentally moved my reticle the wrong direction um, and the first, the second corrective shot, which was way off, but finally the fourth total shot uh, was perfect dead center. Um, so, I'm gonna go ahead and as soon as the range is not hot, I'm going to put that target out there at 100 yards and we're going to try this again and uh, make sure we're zeroed in at 100 and then we'll try to shoot for a group and see um, what kind of group we got out of this ammo. Uh, so far so good. I went out and changed that target and put it out there at 100 yards. Um, yeah, so now we're going to see how it hits at 100. So excited to see what kind of group we get here. just happened. <laughs> I'll try this again. guys so out there at a hundred <clears throat> took a few shots and the first couple were a little bit to the left and a little high and uh, they took a couple more and they went a little further left a little further higher and I don't know if that I let my barrel cool off enough in between shots so push pause for a while let my barrel cool um, made a couple adjustments off the first two shots I took 
um, and now we're back almost in the bullseye so um, once my barrel cools again um, I'll be able to take a couple more shots and see if we can make some kind of a group here but uh, yeah especially with magnum calibers guys you got to really let your barrel cool or um, it will especially a really thin barreled like gun like this one this isn't any uh, custom rifle with a, a with a heavy barrel it's a, just a regular sporter barrel so you gotta shoot three shots and just wait and I didn't do that so I kind of got a little excited trying to get through this but anyway it's those little discipline things kind of like squeezing the trigger I know you want to you want to jerk that trigger but you have to just like squeeze 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 like molasses and try to execute a really good shot and there's probably going to be some really good shooters here watch my form and how I shoot and they're going to probably have a heyday tearing me apart <clears throat> which I can definitely I'm sure I could um, improve a lot in my shooting form and shooting form good shooting form equals good accuracy um, so anyway I'm gonna try to get this as close as I can get with my crappy shooting form and uh, get ready to go hunt elk so anyhow uh, let's see if this barrels cooled off and take a few more shots <laughs> guys this is incredible <laughs> I'm at the freaking gun range and there's elk up on the hill I when I got here I saw elk tracks in the dirt and I thought oh, that's kind of cool they probably come here at nighttime wander through to the river or something there's elk bugling and cow calling up on the hill at the gun range. I've been shooting. Other people have been shooting. This is incredible. I'm gonna <laughs> I didn't bring my bugle tube, but I did bring my reeds. And I've got I've got a Nalgene bottle. And this guy told me, he's like, hey, if you ever lose your, your bugle tube, just use a Nalgene bottle. It'll it'll work. And I'm like, hmm, I'll try it. And I, did, I tried it before and it, it's not too bad. So uh, let's see if I can hear one. <laughs> Here comes a car going by. This is unbelievable. That car made too much noise. <laughs> you hear that? There's a bull bugling. There's a couple bulls up there. There's one over here, one over there. <sighs> it's elk season too. This is ridiculous. Somebody just pulled in here. They're probably gonna shoot one of these bulls up on the hill. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right guys. So I'm gonna go check my target here and kind of see what the deal is. Looks like I've got a couple of groups there, but I wanna make sure I cover up the old shots so I can look at the new shots. Um, I've made some adjustments to the site and 
kind of show you what I'm seeing here. All right, so these two here, these two were the first two shots at 100. And it took two, two more, but I didn't let my barrel cool. So got these flyers, not only did it move left and high, it kind of spread out this way too. So that's kind of crazy. So I looked at this one here and these these here and I figured okay well my group needs to go this way so I made an adjustment moved it over shot still high so then I moved moved my uh, reticle down with the turret and it got us right here then I shot again we got here I made another couple moves I adjusted it over to the right a little bit more. I think I went too far here. But anyway, I've got two holes touching right here and then this one. So um, I might make one little final little tune here and see if we can get back right here into the to the bullseye. All right, I use these little stickers to put over there. So from the distance, we'll be able to see that. We'll leave those two because we remember those were up there. So back to the bench. Alright guys, so kind of ran out of light here, um, big old clouds rolled in, big storm brewing here, so um, anyway, uh, we're about out of light and I'm going to show you my groups here. I got two holes touching each other and then one that's off a little bit, but um, it's probably about a one inch group, um, all things considered at 100 yards. So factory rifle, semi-factory um, ammunition, so I think... I'm pretty satisfied with it. I think I think I can get by with this. And that's a wrap. I think we're good. Uh, I'm gonna pick up my mess hair, head home as I'm as I'm sighting in my rifle. Um, you can't see it; they're too far away. But probably three, four hundred yards up on this hill here, there's been six or eight elk milling around. I heard a bull bugling, a couple of bulls bugling earlier. So uh, <laughs> not really what I expected, but. Um, yeah, I guess if a guy wanted to kill his elk, he could probably just sit right here and get one um, at the shooting range with a pretty nice rest. And I'm going to go home, start packing my bags, and get ready to go to Montana and hunt elk. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, look up my ballistics on this round. I don't have a chronograph. I wish I did. Um, I'm going to look at the ratings on the this ammo that I'm shooting and... Uh, pair it up with my loophole rangefinder and uh, match things up so I'll know how just how far to dial out to a certain yardage. Now we're not going to be taking no thousand yard shots but two three four hundred yards should be should be plenty accurate. I did this last year with my 6.5 and worked great. So anyway um, I'm off heading home and uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Appreciate it. Get your bugle of swag. Bugle of Ram.com